What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. So this is gonna be the first in what's ultimately going to be a somewhat mini series of videos looking at the ISO settings on the camera. The reason it's a mini series ultimately comes down to the fact that the R5C being a professional cinema camera makes things complicated, possibly more complicated than it needs to be. But in any event, today we are simply going to be looking at and orienting ourselves with the menu options for controlling the ISO settings on the camera. So to start this out, the first setting we really need to talk about is the ISO versus gain selection or ISO gain selection setting. So all of the settings that I'm going to be talking about in this video, you will find on the camera setup menu page two. The first one is ISO and gain or slash gain selection. You'll have two options for this, ISO, which is the default and gain, which is the alternative. And basically put this changes which of the two ways we interact with the sensitivity or the sensor sensitivity on the camera. So what does all of this ISO and gain stuff mean? Well, ISOs are what we probably know and recognize if you've ever used a digital similar or a digital camera before or a film camera before that. ISOs can trace their lineage all the way back to film and ultimately the American ASA system of numbering films or rating film sensitivities. Now the good news with ISOs is that they're an absolute scale. What this means is that ISO 100 is always going to be ISO 100 and ISO 100 corresponds to a specific sensitivity in without regard to anything else that you do with camera settings. So if you set the camera to ISO 100, it's at ISO 100. There's nothing you can do with camera settings or anything like that to cause ISO 1600 to be the same sensitivity as ISO 100. On top of that, ISO standards or ISO sensitivities are defined by international standards. There's a couple of ones that are relevant if you're interested in looking them up. The granddaddy, you could call it, although it's not the first, it is the most comprehensive, is in fact the International Standard Organization standard ISO 12232. It's not an open standard. You have to pay to get a copy of it. It's about $150 in the United States at least. Uh, it's gonna be relatively similar depending on which a global ISO member organization you buy it from or belong to. There's some benefits and bonuses or uh, discounts and stuff involved in that if you go that route. The other standard is the Camera and Imaging Product Association's CIPA DC 004-2020. And ultimately this is available for download. You can find it on their website. And this is the organization that essentially all of the Japanese camera companies belong to for producing, you know, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus, all of those companies. and. This standard is consistent with ISO 12232 where it matters for digital cameras. So the reason I said the ISO standard is the granddaddy is it actually incorporates a lot more parts to the standard than is actually needed for digital cameras. So that's ISO, what we're most familiar with on our cameras. Now gain, which I'm gonna talk about in the next video, but just to touch briefly on what it is, is a way of measuring the amplification or uh, describing the amplification that the sensor is producing. And it traces its origins back to video cameras. So video cameras were always electronic. They didn't have a chemical film start. And once you get engineers talking about amplification and electronic systems, they start talking about gain, they start talking about decibels, and we go down a rabbit hole of complexity that is actually big enough to create me or to cause me to break this video into two parts so that I could adequately talk about what gain stuff is without making this overly confusing. Gain is as I said, measured in decibels, it is a relative scale, meaning that you don't actually have an absolute standard. So I can't, unlike ISOs, I can't say have a Sony camera, an RE camera, my Canon camera, and a RED camera and set them all to ISO 800 and expect very similar results. Gain is going to be completely different from that. Additionally, it's not codified by any standards, at least none that I can see. So the gain will vary from camera to camera and manufacturer to manufacturer which makes this all the more confusing and complicated. But good news, in this video, we don't have to talk about that because we're not talking about gain, we're only talking about ISIS. So 
With that selection, get your camera switched over to ISO, which of course is the factory default. Let's talk about the other settings that impact what your ISOs are and what you can do with them. And the first of these is the base ISO setting. So the sensor in the R5C uses multiple base ISOs. Some people call this dual gain sensors. Some people call it dual native ISO sensors. There's a lot of different marketing terms for this. In fact, there's a lot of interesting ap approaches on the technical for the underlying technical design of the sensor to make this work. Again, all of that we're not going to talk about. It's cool. I'd love to talk about it, but we're trying to orient ourselves with the menus and what they're doing here, not get into technical nitty gritty. But the important thing you need to understand, and the reason I bring this up, is that there are two fundamental different modes that the sensor operates, different sensitivities that the sensor operates in. And Unlike on the cameras like the R5, we can actually choose which of those we want to limit the operation to. So the setting we're talking about here is base ISO, again, camera setup, page two. And this controls fundamentally which, which of those two sensitivities the camera uses. Now, for us as end users, what this in turn controls is what ISOs we can select and ultimately how image the image ends up looking, what the results are for image noise and dynamic range and so on and so forth. I'd love to get into that, but that is also a topic for another video as it's complicated. So you have three options here, a low base ISO, a high base ISO, and an automatic setting. The automatic setting is default and the camera in automatic will select between low or high to deliver the best image quality at the ISO that you select when you're selecting an ISO on the camera. Now I should note that Canon makes this a bit com more complicated than it probably needs to be. Instead of just saying low and high, they actually describe it with an ISO number and that ISO number will change depending on what gamma curve you are shooting in. So we'll talk about that in a second. Before that, one last note on the base ISO setting. There is a button function that is available so you can program one of your buttons to directly switch the base ISO modes. It doesn't take you to the menus, it just toggles between low, high, and automatic. So back to what I was saying about the ISO numbers. Canon doesn't just say low and high and leave it at that. They actually give you ISO values. So if you're shooting in BT709 and either the standard or normal gamma curves, so this would be like regular HD co content, I think would be correct for that, then the low is going to say ISO 160 and the high is going to say ISO 640. If you're shooting in BT709 wide dynamic range, perceptual quantization or the hybrid log gamma gamma curves, then the low setting is gonna say ISO 400 and the high setting is gonna say ISO 1600. And if you're shooting in Canon log three, the low setting is gonna say ISO 800 and the high setting is gonna say ISO 3200. Automatic is always gonna be automatic. Moving on from the base ISO, let's talk about the range of selectable ISOs that you have available to you. You can control this to a limited extent, basically standard range or expanded range, by switching the ISO gain extended range setting. So this controls whether you obviously, like I said, get the normal ISO range or an extended ISO range, basically all of what the camera uses. The default for this is off, you can turn it on. Obviously, the reason that they, Canon doesn't provide or doesn't have the extended range enabled automatically is simply a, a question of engine image quality. So this lets you get all the way up to the really high ISOs where you're really suffering or pushing it for image noise. And obviously, that might not be a desirable situation depending on you know, your exact uh, situation. So here's the setup. If you are shooting at uh, a base ISO of automatic and you have the extended range setting off, you will be able to select ISOs from 160 to 25,600. And if you turn the extended range on, that expands to the full range the camera supports from 100 to 102,400. If you have the base ISO set to the low ISO setting, then your range will be 160 to 6400 for the extended range off and for extended range on that will expand to 100 to 25600. 
Finally, if you have the camera's base ISO set to the higher uh, ISO value, your range under normal circumstances will be ISO 640 to 25,600, and the extended range will stretch that out to ISO 400 on the low end and ISO 102,400 on the high end. Now, in addition to controlling the range of ISOs that you have to choose from, you can also adjust the increment that you move through the ISO settings for. So this you'll find under the ISO gain increment setting, again, on the camera setup to menu. And when the camera's in ISO mode, you will have two options here, either one-stop steps or one-third stop steps, with one-third stop steps being the default. So this means basically, if one third stop steps, you'd be able to go ISO 400, ISO 540, or 500, ISO 640, ISO 800, versus one stop where it skips all those intermediate ISOs and just goes from 400 to 800. That brings me to the auto ISO, for lack of a better way to configure it or call it, mode on the camera. So you will find this under the ISO gain mode setting. Again, camera setup menu page two. You will see there are two options here, manual and automatic. The default from Canon is going to be manual. On top of that, there is a button function, again, that you can program any of the programmable buttons to that will automate or switch directly between the two options without having to go through a menu. So this is fundamentally auto ISO on the camera. However, unlike on a camera like the EOS R5, even this is considerably more complicated. So instead of just having the ability to set a low and a high limit, the camera chooses a low limit based on the base ISO and the gamma curve that you have are shooting your picture style or your, your video in. So if you are shooting in BT709 normal or standard, with a base ISO set to either automatic or the lower ISO value, which will be ISO 160, then the lower limit for the ISO or the automatic ISO range will be ISO 160. If you have the base ISO set to the higher ISO of 640, then the lower limit will be ISO 640. For BT709 wide dynamic range, perceptual quantization, and the hybrid log gamma, gamma curves, Automatic and low will limit you to ISO 400, and high will limit you to 1600, and if you're in Canon Log 3, automatic and low are set the lower limit to 800, and if you have the base ISO set to high, then the lower limit for the auto ISO range will be 3200. Now, like the R5 and other cameras, you can also configure the upper limit of the ISO range that you want it to use. You will find this setting at the bottom of the camera config to menu under limit for auto mode. Now this setting will be grayed out unless you have set auto ISO gain mode to automatic. The maximum that you can set here is going to be limited by what you have set the extended range setting to. So if your extended range is set to normal or is disabled, then you will be limited to the normal range for the base ISO that's currently being used. If you are have the extended range enabled, then you will be limited to the extended uh, top end of the base ISO that's used, being used. This also ignores the coarse and fine increment settings. So when you are shooting in ISO mode, you will always have one third stop increments for the maximum ISO setting that you can uh, select here. So basically you set your top end, you go in here and you select the highest ISO that you want the camera to be able to shoot at. So the one thing I wanna talk about briefly before I wrap this up is getting your R5C to work a lot like an R5. What can you do to make the ISO system on the R5C work as close to what you would be used to on an R5 or an R6 or something like that? And this is what you need to do. So your base ISO is going to be set to automatic. Your ISO gain setting you want to set obviously to ISO because we want to use ISOs. Your ISO gain mode setting, well, you're gonna either set that to manual if you like using manual, setting the ISOs manually or automatic if you use auto ISO and want to use auto ISO. And then for the last two settings, the extended range and increment, Basically, these are seasoned to taste. Most people will leave the increment at third stops because that's what the default is, both on the R5C as well as Canon's 
consumer level or non-cinema mirrorless cameras. And the extended range is going to be essentially set it to whatever you want. If you want full access to all of the ISO settings, then it, turn it on. If you don't care and you're more concerned about making sure you don't accidentally shoot at some ridiculously high ISO that ruins your image quality, leave it off. But this will get the R5C's uh, ISO settings to essentially duplicate what you have on the EOS R5. One final thought. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about gains, but I am going to mention this. If you're think, sitting here wondering why I even talk about gains and why there is even settings on the camera for gains, one of the advantages gains have over ISOs, aside from making everything more confusing, is that it gives you much finer control over your exposure settings. Gains can be set in half decibel increments, which works out to be a twelfth of a stop ISO in terms of ISO settings or 12th of a stop in terms of more familiar exposure numbers. So if you need very precise control over the exposure through the camera sensitivity and not through aperture, uh, fine aperture adjustments or you know, using neutral density, then you might want to consider switching your camera over to gains and using that. So that is orientation for the ISO settings and options in the menu. So how changing them affects what the camera allows you to do. I hope you found this useful. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.